Thank you for joining this webinar. For those who don't know PGK International, here's a short introduction. The goal of this webinar is to explain what conceptual model applies to look at commercial performance of tank storage markets. This conceptual model is also the structure of our yearly revised annual tank storage reports. Today we're going to discuss a number of topics. First of all, functions of tank terminals, market fundamentals, market dynamics, PGK's tank terminals commercial performance model, important teams for Singapore tank terminal markets, key takeaways of the Singapore tank terminal market report, A tank terminal can have various functions for its clients. This figure gives an overview of the main functions that a tank terminal can provide. A tank terminal can be needed for logistical purposes, as a trading platform, and for strategic storage purposes. In Singapore, they are likely to have a combination of these functions. Depending on market circumstances, a terminal that functions with excellence in certain high value segments can ask premium storage rates and will find enough demand to rent out its tank capacity. However, markets change and this can alter client requirements and shift profit potential and demand between market segments. To identify which market variables are relevant and how these variables influence commercial circumstances, we have developed a conceptual model. Relevant market fundamentals for the oil storage business are the shape of the forward curve, the competitive market structure and the logistical factors supply, demand, imbalances and trade flows. The shape of the forward curve is determined on all futures markets. The oil price forward curve can be upward sloping, contango, or downward sloping, backwardation. Demand and tank availability are affected and this influences the commercial performance. The competitive market structure consists of a supply side and demand side market structure. Tank capacity and market shares of various terminal operators are key factors that determine the supply side competition. Number of players looking to store, their size and diversity are key factors on the demand side of the market. Last but not least, tank terminals are part of the oil product supply chain and therefore logistical factors such as local product demand, regional refinery output, imbalances and trade flows are very relevant. Developments in these factors influence the demand and requirements for tank terminal capacity. Relevant market dynamics are inventory levels, arbitrage and trade flows, changes in product specification and variation in vessel sizes. These market dynamics have a direct influence on operations at a terminal and on terminal requirements. A terminal that can adapt better and faster to these dynamics will likely show superior commercial performance compared to its competitors. Market dynamics are linked to market fundamentals. In this sheet you can see PGK's conceptual model for tank terminal commercial performance. The model shows relations between market circumstances and commercial performance. As we just explained, market fundamentals drive market dynamics. A terminal that has a good fit to these market dynamics will find that their storage rates are supported. There is also a relation between market fundamentals and storage rates. Main teams for Singapore tank terminal markets. Southeast Asian restrictions on emissions. The threat of global warming has prompted the UN to push for policies that limit the emissions of greenhouse gases. Fuels made from crude oil are one of the main contributors of greenhouse gas emissions and UN climate policies agreed in the Kyoto and more recently in the Paris Accords call for a gradual reduction of oil products consumption rates and eventually the transition to renewable energy systems. Bunker fuel specification changes. IMO 2020. The International Maritime Organization decided to go ahead with the implementation of global legislation to limit sulfur emissions as a result of marine fuels. The legislation calls for a reduction of the sulfur content in marine fuels to less than 0.5% starting from January 2020. Currently, the limit stands at 3.5%. Logistical developments in Southeast Asia. Singapore plays a crucial role in Southeast Asia as one of the world's leading transshipment hubs. Several developments in the region, however, may pose a threat to Singapore's position in the liquid bulk markets. The importance of the Strait of Malacca. The Strait of Malacca is one of the most important shipping lanes in the world, connecting the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and saw over 82,000 ship transits in 2017. 
growth of Malaysian ports. If Malaysian ports develop to their full capacity to handle both tankers and container vessels, fewer ships will call Singapore. One new port project is Kuala Lingi International Port, which is being developed near Malacca to handle oil tankers and alpha bunker operations. Malaysia's East Coast Rail Link The East Coast Rail Link will act as a land connection between several Malaysian ports, especially between Port Klang and Kuantang Port. Goods destined for China from the north and Port Klang will be able to move to Kuantang Port without having to go south to Singapore. New Silk Road Alternatives Malaysia will try to challenge Singapore's status with the help of China's New Silk Road projects. Shortening the shipping lead times via the Thai Kra Canal. The Kra Canal in Thailand has frequently been labeled as a potential disruptor to Singapore's leading status and refers to a project for a 120 km long canal that would connect the Gulf of Thailand with the Andaman Sea. China's two ocean strategy, Kiao Piu Kunming Pipeline. China is becoming an important player in the supply chain and needs to secure its energy needs to feed its growing economy. Developing capabilities at Chinese hubs. While Singapore is the main transshipment hub for bulk liquids in Southeast Asia, and also in Korea the main hub in Northeast Asia, one cannot ignore that ports in China will develop more capabilities and services over time. Key takeaways. Price forward curve. We have used EIA data to forecast the shape of the forward curve. As can be seen from looking at the cumulative stock changes, the oversupply is diminishing fast supporting the backwardation in the future. Please note that backwardation and contango are prolonged price regimes and take time to switch into a new regime. This figure shows how the greater Singapore area tank storage capacities have developed over the last years. Singapore has historically been the largest provider of tank capacity in this area and has roughly tripled its capacity since 2005. Malaysia and Indonesia have smaller increments. Especially between 2008 and 2010, the pace of growth was high. This surge in capacity has been the result of a prolonged period of contango between 2005 and 2011, which supported demand for tank capacity. After 2011, market circumstances were less favorable for tank terminals. But due to the fact that construction had already begun, many expansions capacity was still added after this date. Key takeaways, competitive structure. Over the last decade, the greatest terminal expansions were registered in Singapore. Turning towards the future, however, this figure tells us that near future tank terminals expansions in Singapore are only minor. Malaysia and Indonesia, however, are expected to vastly increase their capacities in the near future, both potentially approaching Singapore in terms of total storage capacity. Key takeaways, logistics. Many Southeast Asian countries have experienced a tremendous economic growth over the last decades. And this upper trend has had an impulse after the global financial crisis in 2008. The continuously growing economies have driven supply and demand for oil products in the region, with the Indian and especially Chinese economy increasing their production substantially. China, India, Japan and South Korea are the region's largest supplier of oil products with China more than doubling any other country's output in 2017. The Southeast Asian refinery output primarily consists of diesel and gasoline, accounting for 44% and 26% of the region's total output in 2017. Most of Southeast Asian oil products demand is for diesel and gasoline, while demand for both products has increased gradually over the last decade. Demand for diesel is rather seasonal and relatively low during monsoon season and high in winter season when the North Asian countries need more fuel for heating purposes. Southeast Asia has surpluses of diesel, gasoline and jet kerosene, meaning it produces more than it consumes. Higher surpluses leads to higher exports of a product, implying an increased demand for temporary tank storage capacity. The surplus of all three products have increased over the last years. Deficits exist for fuel oil, naphtha and LPG meaning Southeast Asia has to import these products from outside of the region. Key takeaways, storage rates. This figure shows the evolution of storage rates for middle distillates in Singapore. Rates for storing middle distillates show a fairly similar stepwise pattern as the rates for low flashpoint oil products. The sudden increase in storage rates in 2011 was quite remarkable given the backwardation in the oil markets that had started that year and which endured until 2014. 
when the resulting contango situation kicked in in 2015, the middle distillate storage rates made another upward jump. The backwardation that started in 2017 naturally kept storage rates a little down. Running up to the bunker fuel spec change in 2020, there is likely to be more interest in middle distillate tanks.